Freeing a Frozen Flintlock Cock. William Hovey Smith, 2021. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And we're in flintlock gun repair mode today. Uh, what has occurred is I just sold a flintlock rifle. And I'm getting ready to ship it off. And I clean the guns before I ship them. And in looking at this one, I discovered something grievously wrong. I had loaned it to a person previously, and he had used it and shipped it back to me. And when I received it, it looked all right, so I just put it up in the gun cabinet. I had not had occasion to look at this gun for, well, actually, uh, more than a year. Well, when I took it down to box it up, I look at the lock, and a picture of the lock will follow. He had cleaned the barrel pretty thoroughly, just as I had taught him, and the barrel was fine. Uh, this is a Thompson Center Hawking, and the vent in the barrel screwed out smoothly and evenly, and it had been cleaned as well. But, somebody had apparently flashed the lock. That is, put a little powder in the pan and fish, woof, to illustrate, I suppose, the mechanism of working a flintlock. But, they wiped it off, and they put a little oil on it, but they hadn't really cleaned it. Now, as I have told y'all many times, rust will develop under an oil film. And that's exactly what happened. So, what transpired is there was surface rust down in the pan, on the side of the lock plate, and most importantly, all over the cock. Now, on the flintlock, there's a good screw that goes through the top jaw. Then it holds the flint, chomp, and then it goes through the bottom jaw, and then you have a rather thin wrist here that actually connects to the lock of the gun. All right. I could not remove the screw. There are two ways to get at it. One, it has a hole through the top of it. It's a round ball with a hole transverse. So typically, you put a rod in there, just twist it, and that, then it screws up. Alternatively, it's slotted for a screwdriver floof, to go through the top, neither of which would work. The usual remedy is when you have a stuck screw like this is you put penetrated oil on. Tried that, still couldn't move it. Hmm. Then, you try heating it with water. Tried that. Still couldn't move it. Hmm. Then I took the hammer off, stuck it in my vise here, and tried heating it with a torch. Still couldn't move it. But one good thing did with the torch is flint will spall when it's put under the high heat of that torch. That is, little pieces will start popping off it. Wear your eye protection. You're going to need it. Uh, these are hot and dangerous, and if they get in your eye, they would do very serious damage. So, after all, this is what ignites your black powder. So, uh, we blew that out. And we also burned the leather that was holding the flint. So then the top jaw was a little bit loose. So that at least, mean, that at least meant I had tension held by rust only against the lower jaw. Clamped it in the vise, put a lot of downward pressure on it with the screwdriver. Couldn't do it. Put a nail through the hole, 
as well as a tougher piece of steel, tried to twist it like that, still couldn't do it. I was applying so much pressure, I was in danger of actually breaking the hammer itself. Because a little hammer stem is only a little more than a quarter inch thick. Didn't want to do that. Didn't want to buy a complete hammer assembly to put on a gun I was going to sell. I went back and got a familiar shop tool that many of you have seen me use, and that's the angle grinder. Now, it is not usually wise to do precision work with an angle grinder on flintlock guns or any other for that matter. This, this is a rather coarse tool for that work. Nonetheless, I don't have a machinist shop, but I did have an angle grinder. That screw is very hard, case-hardened steel. Now, it would cut it, but I would, had to cut a slot absolutely very narrow, straight down through the middle, paralleling the existing slot and deepen it. A little bit of touchy hairy work. We did it. Then the next time we put the screwdriver in that slot, it actually had enough purchase that it did break the screw and it screwed it out. So that was a parts say and now I'll bring the camera up and give you some close up of some of the components. I'm an author, mainly of outdoor books, but I also have some significant business titles. The most recent is Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age. In this book, I advocate that a person create from his own ideas jobs as he needs them. This might be something right now to pay rent or longer term for a lifetime career or even something to do after they have retired. These books are available from Amazon.com and other book resources worldwide as a self-cover ebook or audiobook. Now with all my nice hand gestures, these are the parts I was talking about. You can see obviously this thick layer of rust in the threads. That was what was doing the evil. And you can see the slot I now cut. Okay. We cut it through the transverse hole, but that's all right. Some of the originals were actually cut this deep as well, and should and this one should have been really. Uh, and this is the top jaw. This part is where the rust was very heavy indeed. And we used a uh, solvent to get some of that off, and we were going to brush and scrape a little bit there. Now the hammer is cool enough to touch, and you can see it. You can also perhaps see uh, the rust down in the threads. And the pitting caused by the surface rust that you saw in the previous picture. There's not much to be done about that. It won't look so bad when I put some grease on it, but uh, yeah. And a couple of scratches here through the color case hardening. A little bit worse for the wire, but physically intact, uh, we'll go ahead and return the gun back to surface. And yeah, I should have put a little padding here to protect the finish, but I didn't. So if you do a thing like this, yeah, put a little piece of oil, probably wood, in your vise so that you don't get quite that much and deeper scratching. And this is the remains of the flint and the piece of leather that was holding it. Now these flint fragments are sharp, so be sure you get them off the shop floor because these will actually go through a boot sole. We have now done our refurbishing and reattachment of our lock on our Thompson Center Hawkins. But now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. 
Replacement parts for many Thompson Center guns are still available, although Smith & Wesson now owns the company. These may also be obtained from suppliers like Dixie Gunworks. For more information on my books, blogs, and nearly 900 YouTube videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. To learn more about my business books, go to createyourownjobsecurity.net. The new audiobook of my novel, Until Death Do You Part, will be available in about a month from listenupaudiobooks.com. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.